Y'all hot? Yes. All right, crack, crack a window, crack a window. I don't know if it's AC hot yet. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
that thank you for the life in me. I'm grateful for when my mind was lost and broken, broke my being. But now my mind is clear and I see you, you are my light. In the darkness, where I stumbled, you brought me light to you. When it's time to break me, I can't see no more. Yahweh, I'll ever be to you. My thoughts, my speech, and what I do, I inspire to be a two. Yahweh, I owe everything to you. My thoughts, my speech, and what I do, I inspire to be a two. No one can ever be who you are, cause you are more than we can ever be. You make stars we can reach, the only perfect one there is. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm noticed. I look around and see your word. I know this, I know this. Yahweh, I owe everything to you. My thoughts, my speech, and what I do, I inspire to be a soon. Yahweh, I owe everything to you. My thoughts, my speech, and what I do, I inspire to be a soon. No one can ever be who you are, cause you are what we can ever be. You make stars we can reach, the only perfect one there is. I'm sure, I'm sure I know this. I look around and see your words. I know this, I know this. Yahweh, I owe everything to you. My thoughts must be to what I do. You better sing a hobby. <laughs> Yahweh, I owe everything to you. My thoughts, my speech, and what I do, I aspire to be in tune. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Roger Face Jerusalem. Oh, my bad. Can do it. O merciful King, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you as your humble servant. And we ask that you show your love and mercy unto your family, to the children of Israel, to the ones who are trying their best to observe your law, statutes, and your commandments, who are making an effort to do your, your Shabbat day and bring praise and honor to the day. Please, God, bless us and keep us and strengthen us. Allow us to gain a renewed spirit so that we can make it through the rest of the week. Please, God, allow us to also get some understanding and knowledge today. Bless us and keep us forever and then. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom. Uh, we're going to move right ahead with the Proverbs. We're going to have uh, Brother Kyle Fani. Uh, he was a uh, notified, for short notice, but I'm sure he's always prepared and full of as much wisdom as you can have as a young man. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we first of all, I want to thank most of for bringing us out here today. Give them all glory and praise. And as I said, we're going to be in Proverbs, so Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2 today. Uh, I'm bring my seat though. I'm gonna bring you a seat. I'm gonna give a comfortable feel for everybody here, including myself. I'm um, bring you a seat. Whenever you're ready. Alright, we're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you receive my words, treasure, treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to my wisdom, and including your heart in understanding. Yes, if you call into insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search it for like hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the profound knowledge of God. Alright, you can stop right there. Well, first things first, well, I already noticed straight out the gate from the Proverbs is saying that if saying if you will receive the words of the Most High and incline thy ear to wisdom and search for wisdom and silver 
then you'll understand the fear of the Most High, find the knowledge of Elohim. So, just reading those first couple of verses, it already shows me that it's it's really based off of like your your own choices. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you want, <laughs> if you 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 feel it's right in your heart to do these things, then you'll you'll get all the blessings from the Most High and the knowledge that you might desire. Cause you know everybody want to be smart. Everybody feel like. You know, they're smart. Nobody want to really feel like they're slow or dumb. Right. So, you know, it's probably, if after reading something like this, it would be best to choose to look after the Most High's words and search for wisdom as silver or as hidden riches, as it said. Continue. All right. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the, for the, for those who walk upright. He shall those. He shows those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice, and watching over and watching over the ways of the saints. Mm-hmm. They will understand the right. They will understand the righteousness and justice and, and equity. Every good path. All right, you can stop right there. Um, these verses, to me, it means like it says. Uh, I'll just go off of verse seven. It says, "He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, and he's a buckler to them that walk uprightly." So, um. Me reading that, it takes it, it just gives me the observation that like obviously the most high is with those who are righteous and those who are doing the right thing and and it says then shall you understand righteousness and judgment and equity yea every good path. So that means if you're already righteous and the most high is staying with you, then you understand the good things in life and the things that you might desire. So on the latter end when it's when someone's like not righteous or wicked. Every good path, you're not going to understand. Like, if you're a wicked person, you're not going to understand every good path. So you're going to keep going down the wicked path, and you're going to choose bad things because you don't have that understanding the most high is not with you. So, you know, it's our choice again to which side you're going to be on, the righteous side or the, or the wicked side. Continue. For wisdom will come in your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you. Deliver mm-hmm. you from the evil, from men and perverted speeches. Mm-hmm. Who forsake the path of the upright, of the uprightness, and walk in the darkness, in the ways of darkness? Who rejoice in do evil, and delight in presence of the evil? Mm-hmm. Men who men whose paths are crooked, and who who do, and who do, and who do devious and de, are devious in the ways. Mm-hmm. So will they deliver from the forbidden women, and from the adulteress with with her smooth words? Who forsake the companion of her youth? And forgets the covenant of her God. All right, you can stop right there. Um, with these verses, those last, the last two, sixteen and seventeen, talk about the women. This is something I feel like we, we hear about like nearly every week in the proverbs, something like that. Uh, you know, someone who's who's forward or wicked in their in their ways and trying to bring some other people, some righteous people along with them. Like last week, you talked about the fool and talking to the fool in his own way. So like. To me, those verses mean like, uh, us, I feel like it's us being careful with, you know, the people we decide to bring around us and, you know, entertain and be with because it's easy for someone to like embed their own thoughts and ways and mm-hmm. doctrines on you, especially if you're around them all the time, you know, day by day. So, um, it's true. I feel like that's why it's important that we hear all of us together because, you know, obviously we are like-minded people. <laughs> And we all strive for righteousness here in Goshen. So, it's this this proverb to me. I mean, these verses to me are just giving what's the word uh, affirmation mm-hmm. that we're in the right, going down the right path, and and also giving us warning to stay away from those people that, whether it be a woman or a man, or friends or anything that that are fraud in their ways and crooked in their ways. So, yeah, verse eighteen. Please. For the house sinks down to death, and her paths are departed. None who go back, none who go to her come back, nor regain the past of their life. Oh, you can stop right there. Um, one thing I forgot before on the last part, verse 17, it says, Which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgives the covenant of her Elohim. So um, that's one thing that I considered, and once I read it, uh, it's one I think it's important for us, you know, when we coming up as youth to really remember all the things that we're learning and why we're learning them, you know, the purpose of everything that we're doing. Because it's not like, you know, it's just for no reason. So, obviously, if you if you go up and you forget the things that you're learning and why you're learning them, all that, and your purpose, then you could end up being one of those wicked people just by forgetting the importance of everything you learn. 
And then it says, for her house inclined inclined to unto death and her path unto the dead, none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the path of life. So this is why it's important that we watch and who we around because it says none that go unto her return again. Like if you go enough to somebody, you know, it could be man or woman, like I said, and you don't really know that that none that return her, you know what I'm saying? What, what does it say? Return again. None that go into her return again. So if you're just doing that and you going in blindly, you you know, you might just make the mistake of your life and you never turn back to the way you was and then, you know, you just you just down bad on, in, in the wickedness and you stuck there just because of that bad decision, not paying attention to what you're really supposed to be doing and making bad choices. And then uh neither take they hold of the past of life. So yeah, I feel like you'll just be a lost person if you're doing that and you're not really being conscious and apprehensive about everything that you're trying to do in your main purpose in life. Continue. So you're walking the way of good and keep the paths of the righteous. Mm -hmm. For the upright will inhabit the land of mm -hmm. those and those who have with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, those are the last few verses, but those are very powerful verses, and those are, I feel like those really set the tone for the, the proverb. It's showing, it's showing that if you make these choices, and you're in your upright, you will dwell in the land, and it said the perfect shall remain in it. So that means you'll have longevity in, in, the, righteous, in the righteous path if you're choosing that continuously and consistently. And then it said the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. So it's showing the opposite of if you choose to be wicked. Then you'll be cut off, and you'll see everybody that's, you know, staying strong in the land, and all the people that you're probably talking bad about, John, and whatever, just talking about them. And you're getting rooted up as, you, as you're doing all these things. So, you know, once again, I feel like the main focus of this proverb was just about the choices you decide to make, because it's shown each side of if you're righteous or if you're wicked. So, you know, main thing, I guess, for us, all of us here to walk away with is which side we're going to really be on and which side... And what choices are we going to make as we continue on in our lives? So, I want, once again, I want to thank the Most High for granting me the opportunity to speak to y'all people. And I see calling on me a little last minute, but you know what I'm saying? Once again, Toda and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. So, y'all know what we do every week? We get four or five people to pick a verse or two and say what stands out to them. So we're gonna go with volunteers first, okay? We have a brother Najee right here. Who else? Okay, we got sister Thank you, right here. Who else? Okay, I know there's gonna be a lot of wisdom coming from Ever Yahoo, that's number three. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Mario said he got it, so yeah. Mario, number four. Yeah. And, um, Yaquim, number five. Find the verse you like from now. You ready, Nani? Oh, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, you were first, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was two points. It was, uh, in the beginning, um, says, uh, for, for the Lord grants wisdom for his mouth. What verse are reading? Uh, this is verse 6 and 7 mm -hmm. and probably 8 too. Uh, uh, for, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He has secured the eternal Torah for the upright. It is a shield for those who walk in innocence to safeguard the paths of justice for he protects the way of his devout ones. Um, I think that we are, just because it's life and life is, uh, just like a, a series of moments, some of those moments are challenging. Um, I think we all experience some type of friction. Um, but I think that if you're not righteous, then there's like a, uh, you gotta deal with more than a regular person who's just dealing with life itself. You gotta deal with, you gotta deal with, uh, I guess the backlash or the feedback from the wickedness that you've done. So I think that even though we all experience some challenge, that, um, those who follow the Torah and those who love the Most High, um, it's not that you won't be, it's not that you won't experience adversity, but you'll you'll have a you'll have a way to, to grind yourself to solidify yourself once again. 
um, versus somebody who doesn't have any idea about uh, righteousness or the Torah or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, when they when they struggles come, it's going to show them. When your struggles come, it's probably like a, a exercise or a tune up. Um, and another point was in uh, verse. Um, it says, uh, verse sixteen, to save to save you from the strange woman, from the foreign woman, whose words are glad, who forsakes the husband of her of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house declines to her death and her house to the lifeless. And all who come to her do not return, nor do they attain the passive life. Um, I think that all of that is true, except for one part. Um, you touched on it. Uh, you touched on the main idea, which is. Um, uh, like it's not it's not it's not just a woman it's just people period but like when you when you come around somebody who is just like just negative or uh, just on the lower type of frequencies of of being um, they kind of pull you down it's not like an instant death it's more like a slow motion trigger like you just die slowly and slowly and everything that you do is more death than it is life the way that you eat the way that you talk. The way that you uh, interact with people <coughs> is like our uh, death. But I do think that um, I do think that if you can notice it, and and if you have the will, if you desire to be to be to be righteous, or if you desire to change your life, then you can. Um, I just think that it pro it's probably hard if you got one or more than one of those type of people in your life. It's probably hard for you to do because you've been in that in that pattern so long. But I think if you got the will and the desire and it's genuine, you can turn it around. That's it. Yeah. Anybody want to add to that? Anybody want to add to that? He, I, I, do, I would. Okay, turn the camera on. He spoke. He spoke. I got you. <laughs> Naji spoke about. Waiting on this day. <laughs> slow death. Of being in the company of wicked people is a slow death. I was watching. Uh, it's, it's amazing how Kelfani brought forth a lesson today. The very last minute, and I see calls him and say, hey, do this. Kelfani brings forth the lesson, and as he's bringing forth the lesson, he brings forth the title of today's lesson that I prepared from last night. Remember I told all y'all what the lesson was going to be about today? Last night I told him, choice. Okay. Kelfani wasn't in the room when I told him that. That's heavy. Yeah, no, that just show you how the most high spirit works, because every week these things tie in. He'll, he'll bring up something yeah. in some kind of mysterious way. And I mean, it's been like for the eight nine, last eight or nine classes, it's always tied right into the lesson. But you, you spoke about um, a slow death. Mm -hmm. And that just took my attention to a documentary I was watching this morning mm -hmm. where this guy spoke about the, 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 how, the, how the government brings about a slow death in people that is like popular people and you know like somebody of stature how they want to destroy them for them to come out and just shoot them pow pow it's not really a good thing anymore that's almost like played out right so they'll walk by and stick you with a needle from somebody who had a disease and that disease is now in your body and it creeps up on you and slowly you start getting sick you start breaking down your body start breaking down and then you're dead and the same thing that the lesson is bringing forward today it's a slow death. It's unnoticeable when you're in the midst of those evil people. And I thought that was a great analogy how y'all brothers put that together. So that. Anybody want to add something to that? Okay, who was second? I think it was Leslie. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to go by my full name now. So everything is no longer me. It's me, but it's not me. <laughs> Say that again? I'm not going by my nickname anymore. Okay. Ezra's my nickname. Okay. My full name is Ezra Marmee. So. Okay. Because it's not, this is no longer you. That's what you said? Yes. 2021. Later, but okay. my verse is... Um, 2021 thing. No, it's not. And my verse <laughs> is 10 and 11. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. So... This just ties in again with choices. So when like something's presented to you, if you have the wisdom and knowledge to think about like what you're gonna do, then like you act accordingly. Like you're able to think, oh, is this a good idea? Should I do this right now? Should I do this with these people? So it's important to always 
it's important to gain knowledge and understanding so that when you're put in situations like these, you're not blindsided or have difficulty choosing, or like, or you just know better because oftentimes things just sound good. Like, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go party on so and so road, and you know, at that time of night, they be shooting. So knowledge and wisdom, of course, will tell you. Okay, I'm not gonna go because I know better and I don't want to be caught up. And I don't want nothing happening to me or my people. And it will also help. Like wisdom would also teach you to advise your friends also not to go at that time and that place. And you're like, we could go somewhere else, or we could go another time. Y'all know they be shooting there at that time. Y'all know some stuff be happening. So, it's, but like, it's just important to have that knowledge and wisdom. So like. Discretion and understanding. You won't be dead. 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 You Okay, come on. <laughs> for the upright will inhabit the land of those who take integrity will be made in it, but the wicked will be cut from it from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out. From the I like that just like the righteous is like who will stay in the land when it's really high. But the wicked is it will like it will rot like you know how potato, um, I mean, a potato be spoiled? Yeah. Like, they're going to spoil you and ride. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. All right, say that again. I feel like I'm missing. Come on. Abigail, say that again. I feel like I missed something. Okay, explain it again. The righteousness will stay in the land forever. Right. But the, the wickedness will, will ride until they die. Okay. Right. I wanted to add to that because you said yeah, what potatoes. You wanna, what you want to add, Taylor? If you keep a bad potato in a bad, mm -hmm. a good potato. Mm -hmm. If you keep a spoiled, rotten potato in a bag of good, healthy potatoes, all the other potatoes is going to get spoiled faster. Anything that okay. touches that spoiled vegetable fruit, it ends up spreading. All right, so how, how do we tie that into uh, human nature? I know. No, I'm talking to her, man. You, you could chime in after. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, you, if you are a group of righteous people and there's um, a wicked person amongst y'all, and uh, I think what you said where when, um, oh, no, I think it was how he was explaining it. If you... Uh, if you are um, wicked, be quiet. If you <laughs> if you wicked and you you let yourself be vulnerable to the, a wicked tongue, it can plant a seed in your mind that isn't righteous, and it can spread and make you you know women overthink you know. So it can end up making you do wicked things because you're not really thinking. You're just going based off of what somebody. Else. Anybody want to add something to that? Okay. I do. I Okay. Um, you said how does that tie into human nature? Okay. Yeah. yeah, how does that tie into human nature? Yes. I just needed that repeat this, and I don't think it was good. Okay. Anybody want to add something to that? May I? Turn that camera on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that camera on his face. Wow. Here I go. This is my face. It's true. It's true. Uh, you know what? That is such a great analogy. You know what I've noticed over the years? That that group of righteous people are those who are attempting to be righteous. When that, if you say wicked seed or those wicked seeds that are amongst them, they blend right in with them. And it's hard to detect the wicked ones from the righteous ones. And then with human nature, the direction that human nature flows, you know, we like some news. We like somebody talking about somebody. 
you know, we will always feed into that, and then we end up spraying and carrying it on. It's become gossip in a low-level way, gossip. And then, like you said, somebody else end up not liking somebody else because of something that somebody else said, and that's evil and that's wicked. That's right. That bad potato. You got it. Anybody else want to add something to that? All right, so let me ask, let me ask a follow-up question about that, right? So y'all say that, um, y'all with me? Okay. Y'all say that, like, one rotten, I, I use a tomato more than potatoes. Potatoes don't go bad as fast, right? So let's say a rotten tomato is in a bag of other tomatoes, and then the rottenness is seen to spread more, right? That's what y'all saying, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask you, do you think it works in reverse? Like, you think, do you imagine that one righteous person and around around a bunch of unrighteous people, you do you imagine that the righteousness will spread as quickly? I think the conversion no, no, rate is a little left. It's a little low. Yeah, because people okay. don't want to give up. Right. Say, say what you're saying. I think the conversion rate is a little low. That's it. All right, so let's act. He said he thinks that conversion rate is a, is a little low. Does anyone have a different opinion? I would agree with you, Nasi. I didn't say my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> this is what I would agree with you with. And I, at least what I think that I think you're saying, and I think I think you understand, we understand, I think that's what I think. So what I, what I think I agree with you is, if enough of those righteous individuals speak to that bad apple, that bad tomato, and kind of like force it to change its ways, it either change its ways or it'll just melt and crumble and go away. That, that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. But um, let, let me ask you something, which is... Based on your life experience, which sins, which seems to spread more quickly, righteousness or wickedness? Right now, okay. So why, why do you why, why, why do you think that is? Because wickedness is easier. Easier. It's easier. All right, let's get one person. Okay, as the one. As in Wani. As in Wani. Sister as in Wani. Sister as in Wani. Y'all got to put the sister on it, man. That's the girl name. Uh -huh. So, it's, mm. like you said before many times, it's the mm. default. So, and a lot of times people don't like to be different. They don't want to seem like... Because then they'll get talked about or something. And wickedness, like, now since it is the default of where we are, it's easier for it to spread rather than righteousness. People look at, you know, people who do things like this as, you know, better. They think, they're like, oh, they think they're better than so-and-so. So you think you think it's geographic or cultural? What do you think it is? Um, well, I haven't been in many places. <laughs> so I can't really say. Mm -hmm. But it could be a little bit of both. Because there is a culture based off where we are, do you think? Yeah, sure. Okay, Nadia, you were about to say something. I saw you was holding it in. Then we're going to go to Brother Lion, which is usually the smartest guy in the room. Okay, two things. Two things. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Oh man, I, I think it went away. Now, one part was when you, uh, when Prince Kevin was saying, um, like to force it. I think that um, the verse, one of the verses in the Proverbs said, like, when 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 somebody is wicked or evil, then they uproot it from 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 the land. But I take that as like a kind of like a an analogy in itself, because it don't have to be the land. It could be any type of thing that's been established. So if somebody is in the mix and they don't fit the code. Eventually, they're gonna play themselves out of the out of this out of the system. That's what I was gonna you get what I'm saying? Or sure. or like or like, I mean, I think that sometimes when you force something on somebody, they take it and they hold it for as long as they're in your face. And then mm. after they're not in your face, they're not righteous no more. So I think that it's it's kind of cool to like plant the seed and see what they do with it, see if they water it, and let them. You know, what I'm saying? they're gonna make the decision by themselves. I can't make you be rich. You gotta want to be rich. So it looks. So it sounds like it's two different things being said. There's the rotten tomato making other tomatoes rotten. Then there's the uh, uh, group of uh, righteous people influencing the other person. And it sounds like the majority of you seem to think that the uh, wickedness tends to spread the most. In my personal experience, mm -hmm. I have seen where it's a group of righteous people and the wicked person ends up getting scared on their own and running away and they just leave. Mm -hmm. On their own. 
to where it's like y'all too righteous for me. I'm sorry, can I? I y'all, I'm not able to manipulate any of y'all, so I no longer wanted to. Want I to think. Be here. Okay, y'all, y'all skip a line. Y'all skip a line. Yeah. Let's get back. Let's get back to the line. It was the thing that I, I forgot. Okay, it, go ahead. Go ahead. Get back to it. It was um okay. like I, somebody said that I think it was Zimwani that said uh, when you um, when you like uh, it's it's easier to be wicked and or like righteous people or somebody that's trying to be righteous they might stop or slow down because what somebody else is saying. But really, I think that it's just more effort being righteous. So they probably like it's probably like a fatigue. Yeah, it's a lot of work to be righteous, and like that's that's something that I didn't understand until like recently. It's a it's a it's a different level of effort. It's a different kind of effort too. So it's not like just like the lack of doing things. It's the, I mean, it's not like the, the it's not the act of not doing some things. It's the act of not doing some things and also the act of doing some things. So it probably gets too hard for some people versus them feeling like somebody's gonna say something. It probably just get hard. All right, we're going to get back to that one because I got a whole lot of, I have a whole lot of pushback for you on. It's a lot of work to be righteous. I think that's an a exaggerated reality because, um, well, I'll get back to that. But let's see what Lion is saying. Brother Lion. What I'm saying is just, it's just everything is cycled. And it's the dispensation of time in which we end. That's what all of us are experiencing. It's not unique to Goshen. It's not unique to any individual. It's, it's throughout the earth. It's the energy that is going throughout the earth at this dispensation of time. At one dispensation of time, it will be in a completely different energy, which will put all of us will have been having different reality. See what I'm saying? But now, it's like pendulum. This is the low end of things. This is why it gives us the markers in it tonight. So when certain time come upon you, these are the markers you watch. The homosexuality, the perversion, the homosex, the, the, you know, what is played up in the world shows you what point in time we're in. So as, we, as I was saying, at a different dispensation time, all of us would have been experiencing a higher consciousness. And as you're talking about that apple, that apple would have been experiencing something else. Because everywhere that apple went, it would have been higher consciousness. So the influence is going to be Would have been different. That negative energy would have been trapped. It would have been everywhere it goes. It would have been bumping up against positive energy. So that would have been in the rest. Positive energy is in the rest. Meaning all of us who are thinking positive everywhere you go, you're going to get pushed back. Yeah. Because negative. All right, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. You can keep it on Brother Line because the question is for him. Okay, so you you imagine that nowadays uh, people, there's more wickedness or just more availability to do more types of wickedness? Like, I mean, at, as humans, do you think that humans nowadays are more wicked or there's just more acceptance of it or more opportunities to do it? Because I'm not, I'm really not convinced that humans are more wicked now. now I'm they, slightly I'm slightly convinced that they just have more ways to exercise whatever's going on in their mind. Because I can I can almost never think about a time when humans weren't doing something. Like Cain killed Thabel. That's off the bat humans was acting up. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But but so, to answer your question it, it is that everything is sped up. Mm -hmm. So if if somebody created a situation that a lot of people suffered from it would have been take a long time for us to know about it or see it. Now it's instant, boom. You see what I'm saying? Which, which meant, again, the negative energy had created pathways to manifest negative in a much shorter span of time. And, and in the most perverse way that everybody can see it. Years ago, the children wouldn't see things we see. All of us have seen it together now. You see what I'm saying? The children would not have felt what we felt. All of us are feeling it now. So, so that's how a pathway is given. That's why they're saying, and they're blaming uh, color man, this man, that man. But that they're saying it's negative itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the energies, uh, the entities, whatever, are perpetuating it. I create several, like a tree, different branches in which is spreading like Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And this is even linked to what we're saying. Tanaki's saying, it can get so serious that if it doesn't shot in time, even the elect doesn't get knocked off. Mm -hmm. That's how serious it's going to get. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now do you look like you want to reply to him before we no, go? No, it's, it's just um, what you're saying. I don't think it. I don't think it's more evil people in the world. I just think it's. I just think it's more. In, I think it's incentivized, and I think it's. Um, and I just think that people that know how to live right and know what's right don't. They're not loud enough. Mm, that's interesting. I don't know. I'm not sure I could be wrong, but no, that's interesting. Think about. It. Okay, well, what you have to say? Um. So. We were likening, basically just to recap, we were likening um, people's energy, the spirits of people to tend towards negativity or for one person to create chaos because of their presence. Just the same way you would, uh, a, a potato would rot other potatoes. Um, so if you look at it scientifically, that's all be built on the, the principle of entropy, right? So the tendency towards chaos. Things naturally tend towards chaos, right? When we see things naturally tend towards a breaking down if you are not deliberate to tend to them, right? So what I think is the, the most high created a universe that in order to be righteous, you must be deliberately so. You know, you have to make an actual effort to continually improve yourself or things will tend towards, you're not naturally fit. You have to build that up within yourself. So um, I was going to touch on a little bit, it being similar to the principle of energy that Brother Lion was bringing up, because energy um, plays a large part. Have you ever seen, like, you put a fruit in different places in your house and it tends to rot quicker? or rot slower, you know what I'm saying? Um, temperature, uh, 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 conditioning, a lot of different energies play a role in how fast your, um, how fast whatever you're talking about, whether it be an individual or uh, a piece of fruit or whatever, there's so much that plays a part in the tendency towards chaos. Uh, as far as energy is concerned. So there's another principle um, called oscillation, and I talk about this a lot because it, ha it's, 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 it has something to do with, you know, you know I, I'm into crystals and crystal healing. People like to make it very, mis you know, they like to mystify a lot, but it's very clear with how um, our energies affect one another's energies based on the principle of oscillation. And basically, that's a study that was done with the pendulum clock, which everybody produces an energy field. Everything produces an energy field. But the one that, the pendulum clock that swings at the higher velocity will eventually draw the one that's swinging at the weaker velocity into its energy field and they'll sync up. So a lot of times there's the conditioning of oscillation which causes energies to begin to synchronize with each other. Which means that if everyone is synchronizing, if, if five people were synchronizing to the energy of a negative person. It was because the five people energy for positivity was not as strong as the one person's energy for negativity, which means, right, that the, uh, those, the, 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 the five people were not like, there was a reflection of negativity that they begin to oscillate towards, you know, in themselves, you know? The wickedness was already there the presence just brought it out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The tendency for decay is already there. The presence of the current decay brings it out and draws it out. So the, the thing about it is, if you put a bag of rooted, if you put a, a, a rotten potato in a field with rooted potatoes that are growing, constantly growing, those, they're not gonna stop growing and be rot. It's the presence of the is already there. They're not gonna do what? They're not gonna start to rot just because there's a rotting one. Because they're plugged into nutrients. They're plugged into the flow of positive energy. But they rot faster when they're off the line because they're already, that rot is already taking place. They're not grounded. They're not grounded. They have no nutrients. They have no, and that's the same that we are. That's kind of deep though. It, it is. Yeah, that's kind of deep. Real deep. That's the, that's the same way we are. When you're not plugged in, to the source, and you're not plugged into your power, of course, one bad apple can spoil the bunch. I see Chris face, he's about to steal that. He's going to say that in a lesson. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, yeah, somebody, would, I see you want to chime into that as yeah. in one. Yeah, that's very good. I'm getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, okay, so you know how I said, like, how you said wicked was the default? I think that also relates to time, too, because 
Like he was saying in the past. Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Brother Lion was saying oh, in the God. past. Um, it was like it was a different image, like how they're all saying, like energy. And like now, like I wasn't allowed back then, but you could see how it was more like temptation to do wicked things, and it was spreading more. But now. I think people are feeding off of the energy of what's going on now too, and they're like fearful of it. So they turn to something that think that they think is gonna save them. And most of the time it is the Torah, because you find people who are on Twitter talking about like cause the thing with the um, you know, December twenty first, and some people were saying they were getting superpowers on the winter solstice. Someone was also saying, like there was a the girl who said, No, this is a, a time when black people are gonna wake up and realize who we truly are as a people. And then she like mentioned Israelites and stuff. And they all they always say that, but I don't know if they're digging deep into the story to find out the truth. But you, there's a lot of people, huh? There's a lot of people who are doing that now because I guess like the negative energy of the state that we're in, they're feeding off of it and they don't like it. So they're trying to find something to do. So now righteousness is probably spreading faster I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people that um that live like how you're saying it, but I think you're seeing that because you have more good in you. You know you what I mean? I because that? uh, that's why I think you know because we tend to uh, find what we're looking for, right? So you can see you can see one you'll view the world one way if you're only looking for one thing. So that's good. That's a reflection of um of what's in you. But I see many things because I look for it deliberately. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody else want to uh, chime in on what either one of them said? Okay, so who was next? Um, Amario. Amario? No, he took mine. We had a conversation. <laughs> 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 a long time ago. Then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and attain the knowledge of Elohim. Okay. That sounds like you caught that in the middle of a thought process, right? It starts right? with that too, I think. Right, right. So you catch it, catch it in full context. Catch it in full context, okay? No, read out loud. Read out loud. Read. <laughs> See, it's all connected, right? Okay, okay. Okay, so now what you got for us? All right. Um, so okay, I see time. that spread. When boom, then boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, so uh, the, it said the first step is to find out the And I'm saying, we got first just open up our ears to listen to wisdom. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to add anything to that? First of all, that's a lot. That's deep. That's deep. I know. If y'all don't want to add something to it, y'all wasn't listening. Y'all wasn't listening because there's a lot there. Okay, what you want to say? Who, me or? Yo, yo, yo. He already spoke. Okay. Um, so I look at the, like, the way that people are 
people are so materialistic. If you was to truly want desire wisdom instead of trying to argue about everything, like really listen to what's wrong as much as you are all about, well, you know, back in this day, um, silver and hidden treasures, then you would be better off. Um, uh, you'll, you'll understand the fear of the Lord because you'll understand and you'll have that knowledge to be more, um, I guess this kind of goes with the, the fruit, be more, um, what's that word that you use? Deliberate on yeah, deliberate. being righteous. <laughs> like you'll find that to be more important. And um, instead of being all materialistic, your materialistic would be would be more on wanting to be righteous. So if you okay, let me ask you something. Follow up with the first part that you said. You said you would listen more as opposed to arguing. Do you, so does that mean that you think that a person that argues uh, their view are, are people that are less wise? Uh, I guess, it, well, I, I feel like arguing is unnecessary. Like you have your thoughts. Like I guess the way I am, you have I have my own perception of life, and then when I talk to somebody and they have a completely different perception, I actually, if I don't agree, I, I typically don't say anything because I don't want to offend them. But or but I actually take in what they're saying to try and understand why they feel this way or why they, you know. And then I I look. You know, if it's if it's something that I never thought of, but like, dang, that made sense. I apply it to my life, mm -hmm. and not just be like, oh, well, they don't agree with me, so I'm not gonna. Uh, you know, they, the way they think is outside of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna ignore it. And you yeah, know, I get it. maybe maybe you should. Maybe I don't. I don't care. <laughs> maybe maybe you should give them that same opportunity too to hear the other view. Yeah, right, so that way, so that way they too, so that way they, energy, though. Some yeah, I get that, so oh, combative, yeah, I get it. Yeah, like yeah. arguing with that. No, 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 there's, there's like a, there's like a mature way to argue where you're just, you know, I believe in this, and I believe, you know, the, yeah, kind of, and then there's a, you can say one little thing and not even get to finish your whole thought and they automatically, ah, da, da, like they assume what you're going to say and they right, kind of just, nope, da, 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 like, oh. Okay, like you can tell, you can tell when somebody ain't gonna. It's gonna be receptive. Or yeah. Not, right? So then it's like it's not, it's not, it's not your time. You know, like. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's true. Both, both, both things are, are true. Okay. Anybody else want to add something to that? Okay, brother Najee. It says, uh, what did you say? It said, um, the part the what's the last part? It said, um, oh, okay. Then no, no, it said if you if you go after it, that's what it is. Right. Is it as silver? Right, so I'm, I'm guessing whoever 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 was talking to whoever they were talking to, they knew that the person liked silver and liked gold. So I just took that to mean like, um, if you if you just want it, if you <laughs> if you if you want it, if you want it as bad as you really want like other stuff, like if you really want it, truly desire it, whatever it is, you can get it. Whether it's, whether it's Whatever it is, like I don't want to say go for a wickedness, but whatever you truly want and desire, you're gonna get it. Because that's the power that we have as humans. Okay, this is talking about if you seek it as silver and search for it as treasures. Okay, how many hours a week uh, do you spend at work? Forty. Four. Yeah. How many hours a week do you spend seeking wisdom? <laughs> it's not it's not balanced, right? So we're really not seeking it as silver or as gold. And even if you um and then the other part of it would be how do you define wisdom? That's a real question. How do you define wisdom, anybody? We're gonna stop with the smartest guy in the room. Brother uh, Lion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. No, no, I'm coming to realize that wisdom is not something you can define. Okay, it's I'm like listening. Infinite. Put the camera on him, bro. Wisdom is something like you can't define. It's like, it's like, it's like infinite. And, and, and really, wisdom is not even something you can teach. Wisdom is something is within you. You can heighten it. You can lower it. All of us, all of us born with wisdom. Everybody born with wisdom. But 
he's telling you like anything else you can intensify, you could build it like weight. It could be the scrawniest man and then he can get into lifting weight and his mind changes and then his body become altered and he becomes the biggest man and you'll see it goes in reverse as well. His mind changes again, his body alters, he becomes a terrible looking man from lifting weights. So it's the same thing. So me explaining wisdom, it would be my own way and how I see it and receive it to him. Yeah, that's what I'm asking, your own way. My own way. No, because he said it's infinite and it can't be defined. Okay. And then, then my natural next question would be, if it can't be defined, how can you seek it? it, it right, right. What, what, what wisdom, what the Tanakh, the way, the, the way I'm seeing the Tanakh is talking about it, is putting a value to it. And it's telling you it's so worthy of you seeking that we can see the gold very extremely priced, diamond, silver, rubies, however that is priced, all your priced metal, wisdom surpass all of that. And for you to really want it, you have to see it as that precious. And you have to be so zealous about it. Because I don't have a gold bar. I, I have some couple paper dollars. But who really know worth of wealth? Guarantee you they got gold bars. That's another level of wealth. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Where we come from in Africa, we could easily have attained gold bars, but we have strayed from our culture and way of life. Now, now we end up with paper. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But the ones who know real value of wealth know gold is value of wealth. That's why they have. You see? So he's telling you, so let's put that in the same context. The one who understands the heightness of getting to the most, I know you have to have knowledge, you have to have wisdom, you have to un have understanding. There's no way you can attain what the most high is all about. You see what I'm saying? But we walked away from that, like we have walked away from everything else. So the true and true man who wants to understand the most I has to go back to that channel to find to seek wisdom, to seek understanding, to seek knowledge, then he can get the Mosa into his midst and his bowl to work with, with the powers of the Mosa. But straight from the point, that to me, wisdom is, is an enlightenment. It's something you can't feel. It's something you cannot buy. It's something that comes natural to you as, an, as, as a, a gift that is beyond measure. Like, you think it comes natural to everyone? Uh, it comes more so to some people than to others. Because it's something has, because it lends itself to you. you. You could, that's why someone will go into the mountains and they will attain it there. Someone will go to the waters and they will attain it there. And, and you had to kind of separate to get way more wisdom. You got to separate to attain it. Every man that we see in the Tanakh separated himself to attain higher wisdom. You have to open your mind to, to everybody's thoughts and, and everything yeah. that you see and learn. Like, be more open. It's like an open. Right. Mm -hmm. it, 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 well, um, and then you could attain it. And then you could attain it. You could attain it from sitting with him. Yep. The child. You can sit at the child's feet and the child give you wisdom and you open your mind to it. You that you would never think of. You wouldn't even consider it. Yep. Anybody else have a different definition of wisdom? Okay, we didn't speak to uh, audio yet. What do you have, audio? Y'all want to put the camera on Brother Audio? All right, little Brother Audio. Okay. It's what? A God-like energy. Okay, God-like energy. Okay, now you know I'm going to ask you to explain. You can't just say random concepts. <laughs> you got to elucidate a bit. Okay. Uh, I just say you got to seek out wisdom. And the only way you going to find wisdom is with God. So, kind of like correlated. Okay. The only way, the only way... You're going to find wisdom is with God. Beginning, 
of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So I guess I can see how you got there. Anybody else have a different definition of wisdom? Okay, Brother Nigel. I think. Uh, can you put the camera on? Nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> good, good, good. That's kind I of think, thing. Um, I think I think I think wisdom is um, I think wisdom is knowledge and understanding of God. Cause like if you know something, if you know something, that's just you knowing it. And when you're in a situation, you gotta have an understanding heart to know which piece of knowledge to use for the situation. But I think wisdom is that applied, cause you can still understand it and not use your knowledge. So I think wisdom is just the act of using your knowledge and your understanding to bring about a righteous uh, end result. Um, and sometimes, like, that's why I say, like, I don't think it's, like, extremely hard to be righteous. But when you know something and you understand something needs to happen, <coughs> that's the difference between somebody who might be righteous and wicked and spread the other way. <laughs> might be righteous and wicked. Like, it's just that piece right there, just doing, just doing what needs to happen. Um, that's why, like, the way that you explained it is cool, because, like, you can't get it from somebody else. Like, um, I forget, uh, no. like, I'm, I'm no. just kind of, it's kind of it's kind of annoying that I forgot. But sometimes you can just be, like, somewhere, and you watch something happen, and you're like, oh. And they, the person probably don't even realize that they did something, like, amazing. But you're looking at it, and you're like, and then you take note of it, and you could probably apply it in another way. So I think that, like, it's just, it's an action thing. I think it's an action thing. You could get it, of course, but I think it's an action thing. Okay, anybody want to add something to that? Okay, Ruth? Wisdom is, I don't think, wisdom is, um, there's different types of wisdom. There's all different types of wisdom. There's a wisdom in compassion. There is a, a wisdom in love. There is a wisdom in, um, knowledge of, you know, books and theories. There's wisdom in knowing how to grow your own food. There's a wisdom in questioning things. Wisdom is everywhere. There's wisdom in things, but I think what the most high, um, or, you know, when the Torah tells us that we need to seek after wisdom, I think what it's saying is being humble enough to open yourself up to understanding things in a new way, or understanding things in a different way. Seeking after wisdom means seeking after a higher knowledge, seeking after a better version of yourself. Because there is different types of wisdom, and you can get a different, and, and we all have different keys, uh, uh, pieces to the puzzle, which is why I like to have an eclectic mix of friends, people who are different than other people, um, because it's, a, you know, everybody has a different type of wisdom. There's a, a wisdom and gratitude, right? Like, you see, there's there's some people that are so grateful and so gracious that um, it inspires something in you, you know? There's a wisdom in not not settling, you know? So something that would sometimes see seem to be the opposite of gratitude, of the desire to want more or want better, um, or achieve more or achieve better. There's a wisdom in that. So because wisdom is so vast and and virtually, I think what it's speaking to here is having the ability and the mindset to um, be open to new understandings and apply new understandings that are not your own. Don't get so closed off to what you believe and think that you're so right all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, I think, I think Yaquin had a verse you wanted to read. What was that verse, Yaquin? Okay, read it. Hallelujah. Anybody want to add something to that? What's your definition? Of wisdom? 
saying? I don't know. My definition to wisdom is closer to um, Najee's definition, really. Because, I don't know, can a person be wise if they don't apply the things that they know? Uh, because part of what's part of being, can a person be wise if they don't apply the uh, things that they know and understand? I don't know. I don't think that you can. A person can know a bunch of things and not be wise. So, uh, so my definition is close to the last so, 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 so what do you think about a wise lazy man? I, I don't think that, that it's possible. That I don't think it's possible to be wise and lazy. I think it's contraindicated. I think if you realize the fruits of laziness, a wise person couldn't be lazy. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, my, that's my answer. I know. I know. Because, because you see, sometimes, sometimes they, they, people are taking, like, like the sister said. We may feel that we're about a wise, lazy man, but that wise, lazy man doesn't feel that we're about himself. Because what we may consider lazy is for him to get up every day, either work or do certain things. But you know what he could be doing? He could be sitting there every day praying out of our seeing it, praying for everybody else's safety, praying, 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 or applying his wisdom in a way which is not easily seen, or we, we may consider not work because I, there's no such thing as a person being lazy. Every person moves and does, but it's to the amount. You ever see uh, my 600 pound life? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a such thing as people being lazy. You ever see my 600 pound life? Yeah, watch it. No, it, no, it's a no, 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 it's a, it's a show. I want you, I want you to watch it. I think it's on Netflix or Hulu. And then tell me if you think there's no such thing as. They just sit. Then tell me again if you think there's no such thing as a lazy person. Right? So, 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 so they don't work. They work. No, no, let me tell you something. They work. Let me tell you something, brother Lion. No, no. Put that food to her mouth. She works. But no, it's how we are defining things. things. It's how, it's how, it's how, you know what it is? It's that, you know, everybody, everybody, everybody finds She's what, not dumb. Everybody she finds, dumb things. Everybody <laughs> finds what they look for. So that concept is so foreign to you that you can't imagine it. Right. But it exists. To her, yes. That's but it does exist. It exists. It, it exists exist. because that's why we 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 got to come to realize what we seen amongst ourselves as humans is ourselves living so many different realities, so many different thought patterns and ways of ourselves. Yeah, but to me, to me, still, I feel the like, point is, the, it's still feel like a person can't be lazy and wise. I think it's contraindicated because the output of laziness is always something negative. There's no output of laziness that's positive. Regardless of whatever you consider work, there's no outless output of laziness that's a positive thing. So if you're acting in that laziness, then um, I wouldn't Even imagine that Even though that he said they're praying, that's not positive? Well, I didn't say that that was lazy. But, but, but I never said that. He that, said it was lazy. Yeah. No, I'm saying so you know, 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 because he, we're not seeing him at work. Not we're not seeing that individual putting in any work. We could see that man every day and, and doesn't see him putting in any work. We're just seeing him. Because I used to think, man, people don't do nothing. There is no such thing as a person who does nothing. Right, but it, it's the right. whole even, and it's a work. Even a person that's lazy, they do something, but yes. it doesn't mean that you're not lazy. <laughs> It's, it's completely different because because remember all things all things have to be tempered with wisdom. If a person if a person did nothing but pray all day, nothing else, they would starve to death and die. That's observable reality. Even the prophet, the prophet, remember uh, the Most High had the ravens bring him food. He still had to get the food and eat it because if he did nothing, he would starve to death and die. The Israelites in the wilderness. Manna got rained down from heaven every day. But if you didn't get up before the sun got too hot and went and got your manna, you would starve to death and die. There's no output of laziness that's uh, positive. And you can't uh, pray your way out of everything because praying is basically saying, okay, y'all, please allow this to happen. So that means that you are now putting the most high in a position where you're making him your servant because you expected him to do it. But you're expecting yourself not to um, to contribute to your own well-being. I, I'm always going to push back against I, that. I, I, I didn't, what, what I was saying is mm -hmm. that I wasn't 
Don't say that the man sit there and do the thing. I, I was saying that mm -hmm. I know people who don't get up and, and do the slave. Right. They got different kind of work. Right. And then, and then I know somebody who will say, well, I'm not going to go buy a house. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying to you? But, so, but to me, when they look at me, I'll be like, no, man, you, I'm, you're not productive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But in the concept and his reality, he is productive. Right. You see what I'm saying? He has different goals. Right, he has different goals. So that's why I'm I'm, I'm giving you this, because we could put certain, we, we could become a society that said everybody needs to go slave. Mm -hmm. And we should become, everybody needs to own a house. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to have this, but then that's not even real. So this is why I'm showing you these scenarios to say that, again, all these realities, uh, me and you, in different ways, shapes, and forms. Mm -hmm. Okay, you look like you had something as in Wani. I'm, 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 I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I got a question. How do you define lazy? That's like, the key. Yeah, that's okay. the key. Okay. That's, okay. Going, that's the key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is your definition, your definition of lazy? Because you're saying that you haven't seen a positive output of laziness. So I want to know what your definition of lazy is. Okay, I will, end, I will answer that after I give it some thought. Have you ever seen a positive output of laziness? Yes. All right, tell me more. Myself. Okay. So, <laughs> I have days like, you know, you got days where you constantly, you're constantly working, you're constantly moving, you're constantly, you know, putting things out there to get um, work done. So then, I got my lazy week. Mm -hmm. My lazy week is where I get that energy back. I'm resting, I'm rejuvenating. So it's like, to me, that's like a positive output. You being lazy. Oh, I get you. I understand you now. Let me ask you something. Do you think a, a person that's have, having a lazy week makes them lazy? Because I would disagree. Some people would, but that's why I, I think I think that a person a person that works hard having a lazy week, I find that to be wisdom, because otherwise you will work yourself to death. I find that to be I find that to be more wisdom than laziness. Mm -hmm. To me, I would me I don't know the thought process uh, that I had about laziness was like on the far other side of that, like a kind of person wouldn't even yeah. wash up, wouldn't even wash a dish, wouldn't even switch the channel if they don't have the remote. Yeah, cool. There's really there's really people like this really exist. I know I know we it's so frowned upon here that if a person had that in them it uh probably come right out of them, but people like that exist, you know. I think it says in Ecclesiastic is the punishment of a foolish man is a, it, it, it's his own foolishness. And it's like the same thing with a sluggard and they always relate to or always relates laziness to being foolish, right? So I think the concept of a lazy person is someone who is unwilling to do what it takes to sustain their own well-being. That is laziness and foolishness. You know, a per the person that goes and decides to reject society, not work, go somewhere and meditate on a hill, there's sacrifices that he will incur that he agrees with. He, he, he's sacrificing those things, so it's not laziness, it's a deliberate choice. I don't want to... I don't want to go and work in a, you know, but he still has to eat somehow. So what he does, he's going to get the fruit of his hands. So whether he plants a garden and eats mm -hmm. kumquats all day, you know, that he grows himself or whatever have you, he's not sitting there waiting on other people handing him things. And, uh, uh, um, you know, a lot of people in this society have the ability to be lazy because of um, technology and inheritance and things like that where... I, I don't want to go to the store. I just I just order it online or whatever the case may be, and we're we're spoiled with that. So laziness is more of an issue for for us. I think sometimes because we have to make deliberate actions to get up, get moving, and all that kind of stuff. And so it can creep into our lives in different ways to where now we're developing diseases, we're developing cancers, and things like that that are relative to our desire to take shortcuts. Anybody want to add something to that? Yeah, so how, how do you, how do you define how do you define uh, laziness? Mm. 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 Yes, that's funny. <laughs> um, how do I define laziness? As a moment or a time where somebody is just, or where somebody or something is just like sluggish. Just not doing anything. So, know, so let me ask you something. Do you feel like a, a person having a lazy moment uh, makes them lazy? Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
No, but that's not that's why I ask you right. definition. Cause yeah. no, I don't. Cause you said a moment. What do you mean? I mean, with some, moment. yeah, that's right. my definition. Mm-hmm. But that's why I asked. Mm-hmm. What's your definition? So a lazy person is someone who has continuous lazy moments. Right. I think I think in order for a person to a person to be anything, they have to be continuously that. Like, let me ask you something. If a person does one righteous act, are they righteous? If a person, oh, hold on. If a person, all right, because I'm gonna I'm get you in a, uh, I'm gonna get you in a uh, verbal trap. You ready? If a person does one righteous uh, action, are they righteous? Don't try to quit crying now. No. And are they righteous? Okay. If a person does one wicked act, are they wicked? No. Yes. I don't think they are. Okay. Yes. No, the wicked act. Like, what if they they killed a a, yes. a whole town full of people? They they hit a button. No, look, 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 I don't know. You see? No, I don't look look. I don't I don't I don't I don't have an answer for you, but it just it just shows us how sometimes uh, we're more critical than we are understanding, you know. Because if uh, for example, if um if a uh, if a guy did a food drive, he fed ten thousand people, you'll be like, that's nice, he's a really nice guy. If a person, I don't know. Trip the old lady, you'd be like, he's working forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it balanced? I don't know. There's nobody, there's nobody that you would see trip an old lady. Intentionally? Yeah. Well, then, then he's wicked. Right. 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 But now, conversely, I wouldn't, to be honest, I wouldn't argue with you, right? But if a person deliberately like fed 10,000 people, is he always righteous now in your assessment? So that just shows that we got like this. Weird balance in our brain. A person could do one wicked act and for, uh, to us forever, boy, that boy wicked. Conversely, a person could do one righteous act and we won't say forever that person is righteous. Also, if a person did righteous a bunch of times and did something wicked, people would be like, that dude is wicked. Yeah. Conversely, if a person did wickedness a bunch of times and did something righteous, you will never just forget all that wickedness. Mm-hmm. Good thing that we are not the judge because the Most High already spoke about this. The Most High said if a man did wickedness all the way from his life, all his life, and turned away from his wickedness, and then did right, and it also said people always skip this part because they want to make it like church and say, and he righted the wrongs, and he paid back the pledge, which means you got to try to right your wrongs, then all the wickedness that he did will be forgotten. Conversely, it also said the opposite, that if a person was righteous their whole life, and then they turn from their righteousness and their wickedness and said, all their righteousness uh, shall be forgotten. So the blessing is that we are not the uh, judge. Did he feed the people first or kept the old lady first? <laughs> Same day. Same he day. tripped the lady at the, at the, the food interest. pantry. Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't know. Whichever way, you got to be continuous. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got to act in the moment of your uh, Short term, or you're not the measuring, it has to be continuous, yeah. and I think it's based on your heart more so than your action. I don't agree. I, I think your you, heart. With, with goodness, you have to be continuous. If you do something wicked, like if in your heart, if it's in your heart to trip an old lady, you just you it, that your heart's wicked. No, first of all, I'm not sure. No, first of all, I'm not sure that you're wrong. But that shows you, that shows y'all what? Y'all with me? That shows you that, well, there's perspective, but it's not that simple, is it? No. Uh, and a lot, of, it's, it's really, no matter how, how many different situations you put in your mind, it's really not that simple. And the blessing about it is that we're not really the final judge. Because there's people that we looked up to, and that we look up to, that... They do a lot of good things, and if we knew a certain characteristic about them, we'd be like, boy, I don't know about you no more. Mm-hmm. And then there's also another person that we found out they did something bad, but if we knew the whole character of the person, we'd probably be like, not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not that simple, but the blessing about it is that uh, the Most High is the actual uh, judge because we will mess it up. Okay, anybody else got anything else? Well, he judges, I was saying, he, because that's why he says, I judge the heart, though. Right. It also said that the heart is uh, deceitful above all things and exceedingly wicked. It says a lot of things about the heart, right? right. 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 I would look at that like it meant your intentions, not necessarily like what's in your heart. What are your intentions? Yeah, that's what he meant. He meant the same way. They don't mean like biological. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we got a. We know we got a good lesson today. 
Let me see. My brother Prince Cass, he he getting his um minds together for the meditation. I see Amario wanna get one song of praise in. So we're gonna have him get one song of uh praise in so that uh we got time for Prince to get his mind together and we're gonna go right into his abbreviated lesson that will conclude prior to Yom Rishon. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, what you singing, Mario? You starting? I'm starting off. Yeah. Catch on. Always, come on. Ready? children, some of them five children. They were all on the Zoom channel, and I'm hearing, oh man, it just, it just set me up. I was about ready to start that little boo hooing, but I, you know, oh man, I'm going to do that, right? But I felt that emotion coming, and I'm going to share with you the, what I felt in that emotion. Sister there, brother here, 
I can't point out any y'all. But that brother, that sister, when we were younger, yeah, so I was like, well, I got them probably about 10, 15 years, I don't know. But anyway, since I'm here, about around close to me, though. I don't try. I'm 39 and three quarters. She got to be about 36. But anyway, here we go. I remember when we started out in this way years ago. They were born into this way. I wasn't born into the knowledge of who I was. But early in my walk, I met these people. Her father was like a really best friend to me. Her father, real good dude. His father, he was about like a best friend, but he was more like somebody I would go to for advice, for instruction, talk to, and, and just so many different things. So they were children to me because I had them by several years. I said he was teenagers when I was a little bit older than them. It makes a big difference then, but I knew them. And to watch, to, to, to be on that call today and hear this man's children and this sister's children and then my children and then <coughs> my grandchildren, all these little ones, and then more AOL, we, we, you know, brothers we grew up with, now they got children and everybody's young. And everybody's so full of energy, and they haven't left the way. You know, we, we, we are passing this down from generation to generation to generation. And this is really important. And this thing just filled me up with a joy today. It, it, you know, because the Most High's word is not being spilt by the wayside. It's actually taking root in our, in our soul, in our essence. You know, and it's that call this morning that we had on the Zoom, man, it just, it touched my heart in a real special way. I tried to express myself. I don't think, it, I don't know if I did a really great job expressing myself, but that was an emotional experience for me. Because a real man of the creator, his desire, his passion, is to see this thing go on and on and on, from generation to generation to generation, but at the same time increase with more power, more force, more energy than what he brought forward. You know? And that's what this is all about. So I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of this great legacy that's being laid out right now because actually in reality, we are creating the new Tanakh for the future generations to come. So they're going to see all these things, they're going to read about all these things, and your names are going to be mentioned. So just remember that. Remember that. We were talking about that earlier today, that the most high he chooses. How many from a city? One from a city. Say that again. One from a city, two from a city. From a house. Is it quick? Yeah, I thought, we thought it was, yeah, I thought we thought it was the reverse, but I'll accept whatever she said. <laughs> you know? But that's just to let you know that everybody ain't going to make the cut. And you can't expect for everybody to make the cut. There are a lot of people right now that consider themselves to be worshiping the Creator, but they got an idol attached to the Creator's worship. And they cannot move in direction and give glory to the Creator without giving glory to that idol. Mm -hmm. They'll say they do, but just catch them on a sneak when they're not thinking about it and watch how they praise the Most High. They attach that idol to their worship of the Creator. I'm not saying that they're not going to make it. I'm not saying that they're not the ones. All I'm saying is right now, it don't look too good. Because we got kicked out of the land for practicing idolatry. How do we expect to go back into the land on the same thing that, that we've practiced that got us kicked out? We got to clean up our actions, right? And we got to show some longevity with our actions being cleaned up, right? Yeah. But that ain't my lesson for the day. It's about choices. That's right. It's about choices. Anybody going to read for me today? Can I get a volunteer? I need a strong reader. I'm a strong I reader. I need a strong reader. Can I get a reader today? You got me? All right. Can you think you come closer to the camera? They can hear you. I got to stand right here. 
Are you going to get some? Put your chair up. Just put your chair right there. First place I want to go, so I can set the foundation for what we're about to get into. Today's lesson is about choices. Choosing, having the ability, the opportunity to choose. When I prepared this lesson, I prepared this lesson as if we were going to be sitting down with the books. You know, we crack the books open and go through the books and say, look at this verse, look at this chapter. So I'm all over the place. I even went into the Arabic with certain words to find the root, the call, the definition, the effect, so I can bring it back to the Hebrew and say, see, it even relates to that. So that gives you the mind state of our people in a whole, not just the Hebrew nation, but the people around the earth. You know what I mean? Brother Lion, you might want to stand up. Because it's going to be a doozy. <laughs> and I don't want you to miss it. I see you back there. He's like he has some wine or something. <laughs> I'm in. I'm so deep in. I'm just like, I'm deep in. I'm now, I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the short version and condensed version. And maybe next week I'll get to do this lesson again and stretch it out a little bit. All right? So I want to start in Isaiah, the 29th chapter. Let me know when you get there, Rita. Okay. So, one. so many powerful things were said today in this class. This was a beautiful class. And anybody who missed some of it, you should go back and rewind it and listen back to the beginning. We were in Proverbs, the second chapter. And it was strong. Mm -hmm. The interpretations, everybody's giving their opinions. The matter was powerful. But you have to go back and watch the class again because it was good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you miss things because you don't you don't be that attentive toward the situation, the reality of it. So let's get started. We're going to start. We're going to just start with one verse, and then we're going to go to Genesis the fourth chapter. Isaiah, the 29th chapter, verse one, verse 13 is where we're going to start. Watch this, fam. Oh, wait, wait. People still moving around. Let them, let them get still. It says 29, right? Yes. First one? Verse 13. 13. Yeah. Isaiah 29 and 13. Read, please. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore the Most High said, For as much as the, this people draw near, near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. What, what we do? Read that again. D. What that D? Bro, that's the word. Bring it back. That was D. Bring it, Bring it again. Please. Wherefore the Most High said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Wow. Mm. Keep going. That's it. What that mean to you, fam? I think somebody got it. Somebody felt it. I want to see what y'all feel. What you think? Speak up, please. We can't be pausing and hesitating. Pause and hesitation bring about death and destruction. Do not pause. Do not hesitate. Move forward. Say what you got to say. Say it. We move it on. Next person. Yes. All right. So I'm saying like people like they'll they'll have their they like. They'll praise and, and their lips will say it some way, but their heart is like it's in the other direction and it's taught by the, the ways of the people. That's what it's they what? It's taught by the ways of, of men. Very good. Very good. Anybody like else? Yes. All mm. talk, no action. Mm. All talk, no action. Mm. All right. Anyone else? Mm. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, BD. <coughs> Expound on your people. Expound on your feet. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. Now, see, did you want to say something? Let's somebody else go first. Yeah, because I see you. I'll go. Oh, y'all, somebody else? Go ahead. I'll go. Everybody uh, being quiet. I feel like, Speak up. Let me know. I feel like the verse means it's just the most high evaluating how, how he sees he's really getting the service of, from the people. You know, people pray and all that stuff, but really doctrines that everybody's teaching, such as, you know, the religions, Christianity, all that stuff, really taking over what people really intentions and what they really doing. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. No kids. No kids. 
Uh, it, says, it says, the fear of me is the commandment of man taught by rule. So that means that he said, all right, let's catch it on context. It says, the, the people, they draw now with me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips. That means, like, if you talk to them, they talk like they about the way of Yah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With their words, anybody could do that. A child could talk from age two, one and a half. Mm -hmm. So with their words, it says, but what? The affair of me is just the commandment of man taught by rope. So that means that all of their fear is just them following what other people told them. Mm -hmm. There's no connection there. It's not authentic. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It's not authentic. They're just following what men taught them. They're, there's no passion there. There's no connection there. And only with their words, they honor them. So that's clearly frowned upon. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. The creator in this particular verse uses the word love to mention the mind. But that fear, he's talking about that fear, the word is ya'an. Mm. And it's not speaking of being scared or fearful. It's speaking about a man's intentions. It's speaking about a man's sincerity to walk in the direction of the Most High King. One of the things today that we have to keep remembering is that the people who interpret the scriptures for us are interpreting scriptures based on their hidden agenda what they're trying to get you to see in the interim after you finish reading. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want you to fear the Creator and want you to think that it's about being scared of the Most High. Oh, dreadful, oh, oh. Well. No, the Most High wants you to serve Him with a pure essence. Your intentions is what this is all about. So when you get to make that choice in the Most High today, we get ready to get into that, you have to watch what your intentions are behind the scenes. Now, the brother in the page in the room brought up a question. The brother brought up a question about what is the difference between sin, iniquity, and transgression? Does anybody know the difference between sin, iniquity, and transgression? Hold on to that, okay? Because we're going to touch on that today in our lesson, if I got enough time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn with you, please. Remember how we started out this lesson, please. What's that word that they're using in reference to fear? Say yaan. Yaan. Okay? Yaan. And yaan actually means what? Your intentions. Y-A-N. No, 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 no. You bet the Hebrew way. We get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get started, please. Rita, Genesis, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. We're going to start at the first verse. Okay. And remember, today you get the condensed version. Genesis You're not four. getting the full out all fledged version. You're going to get the consolidated disc version because my children told me last night. <laughs> we like it better when you come off the top of your head. We don't like it when you come out of the book because you be taking too long. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do a little bit of both just so I can keep you on the stage. Let's go. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And, and Adam knew, his, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Most High. And Adam, Hawa, or Hawa, knew, I mean, Adam, Adam knew Hawa, his wife. Now, when it says knew, we all know that he knew her. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to bring forth a child. Mm -hmm. And that child's name is what? Adam. And then again, she brings forth a child, and his name is? Adam. Adam. Do you know that they're twins? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Think about it. Think about it. Hold up. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. Stop the cat. Stop the cat. Y'all jumping on me. I'm not finished. I said, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. See, you're taught by the perceptions of men. Let me finish. Okay. Adam and Eve wrote about twins. Oh, they brought about twins. See, that's what happened when you think you understand. Yes. Sister said it earlier. They think you, they, somebody talking to somebody, and they think you know what, they know what you can't say, so they just blurt it out, and you ain't even about to say that. No, we heard what you said. That's the least of it. Don't clean up. This is the best crew in the world, boy. They is, this is the best crew in the world. Y'all are on point. Adam and Eve brought about twins. Can't do it. If you know.
notice in that first verse, it doesn't say he knew his wife again. It says, and again, she wore I know you did, but we get ready to get there. Go ahead, read on, please. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in now, now, Cain, Abel was a tiller of sheep. Abel dealt with life. He dealt with nature. He dealt with the regener regeneration of kind, of a kind. And Cain dealt with the earth. Bringing forth substances from the earth, which is a good job in reality. Right. Do you realize that we, as human beings who came after them, got incorporated with both tasks in order for us to survive? Mm -hmm. But our forefathers didn't have to do anything for their survival until after they committed the sin. Mm -hmm. Do you know that being a tiller of the ground was a curse on our down? Mm -hmm. Because of the evil that him and his wife had done? Mm -hmm. But prior to that, nothing was to be done. Wow. They just played all day. They could just run around with the cows and kick them and laugh at them and Are call them names. You know? They could be lazy. <laughs> all day. Yeah. But then after, <laughs> after, and my wife get me to this, after uh, the disobedience that Hava did, she, she, they say, well, that was another question. What was the fruit that Haba ate of What's off the tree? Was it an apple? What was it? Scripture never say. My wife says she believes that it was disobedience. The fruit of disobedience. That's mm -hmm. a good one. And I can see how that's a possibility. Because Adam was commanded not to do something. Look too deep. He told it to his <laughs> wife, and she did the opposite and partook of the spirit of disobedience. So they came down as she ate, she consumed, and she did something. It's deep. It's deep. So anyway, let's get back. So as a result of their, their disobedience to the Creator, now all of a sudden, they had to work hard to sweat in their brows. And even when they did all that, the earth still didn't yield forth its increase in its abundance like it was made to do. Can you imagine... If the earth is bringing forth these big grapes, remember mm -hmm. Joshua times? They brought forth these big grapes out of the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. It still wasn't producing what it was made to do. Wow. So imagine had Hadam and Hawa not committed that evil. We probably wouldn't have been able to tap the grape and get one. Man. I mean, our imaginations can't even touch the possibility when you're dealing with an omniscient power like the Creator. Mm -hmm. right. We can't even fathom what the world would have been like had we not have done, had our forefathers not have done that. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to the lesson. Read on, please. Verse Read 3. Verse over again. Oh. Two. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Already from the door, it appears as if Cain is being cursed. Y'all thinking about that? No. Mm -hmm. No? Because Adam, as I mentioned earlier, he only had to till the ground as a, a repercussion of his curse. He was being cursed, and a part of his curse was to till the ground. Now, Abel, Cain, is now being a what? A tiller, tiller of, of the, the ground. ground. As if the Creator already know, for you evil, you wicked. Here, get over here and till that ground. But Abel didn't have to till the ground. So Abel was like, y'all always wonder why this curse is. Why was that Abel came and killed? Him? Why did he get mad at his brother? Maybe that's the reason why. He was already cursed. He might have already had the most high saw that evil inclination was already on him and said, you know what? You're going to kill the ground. And you're going to raise animals. Say it again. Like how you're saying, like how the most high knew King Hezekiah. When he was before he That's was right. conceived, That's right. he knew what was to be. That's right. Yes. But if he didn't do it, who else gonna do it? Mm -hmm. His father was told to do it. While his father stopped doing it. And not even only that, not only that, it was like his passion to do it. He could have raised animals like his brother, but he didn't. What he did was, or both of them could have did both things. Right. But he didn't. So for some way, the scriptures only say that Abel, Abel, Raised animals. And Cain 
tilled the ground. But the ground was just cursed. So then his job was <laughs> I'm trying to argue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. In the, no, in the thought process you're going with, it, it, it kind of seemed like 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 <coughs> the people that are blessed are people who uh, could provide for themselves without turning the ground. Ain't that something? I never even acknowledged that. <laughs> I never even thought about that way, but that's a good one. Yes. Oh, uh, um, I was saying like um, Abel had Abel had to deal with uh, the growing the sheep, raising the sheep. And stuff. Ain't that? Do a childbirth and stuff. That would be that good. Pain. That's right. That was a curse too. Oh, you're good. You're good. I like that. Now, them young boys, what's them? Is that the little twins? <laughs> them young boys is sharp. I like that, but I don't think that was Chris Park. You know why? Because most children bring forth children of their own, and they never said that the animals would be in pain like the woman. But I like that. Sharp. Shows you thinking, boy, you my man. I'm going to take you back to Philadelphia with me. <laughs> anyway. Yes? It yes. kind of makes me think, because you said, you're talking about, you know, this curse yes. that Adam got and then yes. his son got it. Yes. It kind of like shows this, this continuation of evil and wickedness progressing because yeah. this so-called goodness was destroyed along with, because Abel was destroyed and he was supposed to be this goodness you know, that came from the Most High, and then before mm -hmm. that, you know, the earth being, you know, one with everybody not being able to, when they were, before they ate the fruit and everything, the yeah. earth was good, everything yeah. was good, yeah. and it shows just a continuous cycle of wickedness yeah. prevailing. Prevailing? Okay, because he killed him? Yeah, and he okay. was able to continue to live on, and then, you know. Very good. Very good analogy. Yes, my brother. Oh, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> So it's Adam who introduced the, you know, what we call evil or uh, negative energy into the world. Did Adam do it? Uh, was it was it was it there prior to him? Or not? I thought I heard you say something earlier about if you ain't got no knowledge yeah. of a thing, if people don't know, you know, everything was already introduced into the earth. It was already in the earth, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a thing of good or bad. Right. Mm. evil and righteousness. Right. It wasn't a thing because they just did what they were made to do. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't until you had that... What was that word? Choice. That's right. What was that word? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the intentions behind a thing is what makes the thing evil. You understand what I'm saying to you? No? Okay. I'll share with you this. I, I didn't say no. I heard yesterday, I heard earlier my sister, she spoke, the princess here spoke about somebody tripping an old lady. Yeah. They, they evil, they evil. Wow. But what if he tripped an accident? Wow. What if he tripped the same one? His intention behind the trip is what made him wicked and evil. Right. Okay. You follow me? Right. So, same thing here. Mm -hmm. If they are intentionally going out doing mischief and wickedness and evil, then they are what? Evil. Evil. Yes. Yeah. What you say? Curiosity. What if you wanted to see how she react if she fell? That's evil. That's still his intention. Oh. That's still his intention. That's wicked. Maybe helps her out. Yeah, yeah. He can help all he still wicked. He's still wicked. He's still wicked. He wants to know. Yeah, yeah. He could have found out by tripping his mother. Oh, that's evil. That's evil. Yeah, yeah. He's still wicked. He's still wicked. Yeah, yeah. He could have found out by tripping his mother. <laughs> That's even more wicked. I know, but at least he would have felt that. Somebody before then, and he saw that. And he his, tripped them. his intentions is what it's all about. He all over the place. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. Um, I mean, what's the I question? Was saying, I was saying, when they make the apple, that they make the fruit. I can't hear, family. When they ate the fruit, yes. They they try to uh, choose what's good and evil. They began. Well, the scriptures actually said their eyes was open oh. to what? Okay. Knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. Good. I die. Mm. Right. Knowledge of good and evil. So mm. it you sharp, man. I tell you, I'm going to put you in my trunk when I go back to Philly. Oh, dang. You don't know. stay with me. Dang. You don't go back to Philly with me. I have put him in the trunk because mom ain't going to let him go. <laughs> All right, let's go, family. Where we at? Where we at? Everybody on the same page? So who was twins? 
Cain and Abel. Right. Who was cursed? Cain. 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 In the in the in the animal is the life, the life that's more reflection like the creator. See, Cain had a reason to be angry or jealous of his brother. And that reason is not specifically spelled out. We was talking about it today. Six bad apples or one bad apple can turn down a whole crowd of righteous people. Mm. For some reason, for some way, righteousness seems to always prevail. I mean, evil seems to prevail over righteousness. Mm. But I like that analogy, that if we got a good lifeline of righteousness, we can prevail over that wickedness. Mm -hmm. It ain't until we cut that lifeline off, I told you I was going to use it. Mm -hmm. It ain't until we cut that lifeline off that the wickedness can consume us. Think about it. Adam and Eve was in the garden. What did they do? They cut that lifeline. She cut it first and then gave to him and he cut it too. And when they cut that lifeline, they both became what? Bad apples. Mm. And who was the bunch that they sported? Everybody. 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 It all ties together. It all ties together. Mm. And we didn't even get in the second one. <laughs> we didn't even get in the second one. Oh, we didn't even get to the third verse yet. We had a whole lesson. Oh. Is that right? Exactly. All right. Bring back home, friends. Bring them over to the place. Did he say, let's go home? <laughs> That's a bring them back on. Y'all ready? Yeah. Where we at? Genesis. Genesis. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 4. Let's go. Verse 3. Verse 3. I like to start over. In it. I don't like to pick up now left off. I like to start over so you get it in your mind. We actually, we actually never read, read this verse yet. And in process of time, it came to pass. Now you got to stop. I asked you to back up. Remember? I said start over. Mm. Don't pick up. Something important you're getting ready to say. Going to answer a whole lot of questions that's been out in the earth for a long time. So back up to, I guess, verse 2 and read that again. And she again bare his brother and Abel. And she again bore his brother. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. <laughs> Abel but was Cain, a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Watch this, fam. Here it come. And in the process of time, it Wait came to pass. Wait a minute. Wait. Huh? What just happened? See, you read the scripture. The the there you go. That's the key. The you see, people read the scriptures and they don't really understand. Mm -hmm. What's that called? You had wisdom. We spoke on wisdom, knowledge. People don't really understand. Because you'll read right through that and all of a sudden you think that they still two little kids in the woods getting beat up. No, they grew up. Mm -hmm. The process of time is going to occur like two or three times in this chapter. Or the next chapter. But people don't pay attention to that. And then they ask, well, where did Cain get his wife from? A process of time had elapsed. Mm -hmm. And nobody even paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. We are thinking that if ain't nobody in the earth but them four, he killed that one, so it's only three. Where's the wife come from? Scripture says, in the process, the process of, of time. time. <laughs> a lot of people don't even pay that no money. Read <laughs> on, please. Mm. So where came his wife? Um, you know people try to say it was other people in the earth at that time, right? No, it's just a sister. You know people try to say that other people's in the earth at that time, right? Mm -hmm. But what did Adam name Hawa? He named her Hawa because she was the what? Mother of all living. Thank you. Let's move on. Mm. And then the process. We're just breaking all kind of barriers today. Don't get frustrated with me. We're breaking all kind of barriers. Read on, please. And in the process of time, it came to pass. What came that, to pass? That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground in offering unto the Most High. And what happened? And Abel, he also brought of the first one of his flock. Now stop the... for a minute. Ask yourself the next thing he's about to read. Ask yourself why. Read on, please. And of the fat thereof, and the most I had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Why? Yes. I think in my book it says choices. I feel like Cain probably just brought whatever. Uh -huh. and Abel brought the best of the best. Mm -hmm. I think. That's it. Okay. The first one. Well, no, yes. It was, um, it was probably blemishes on the fruit, like spoilness on the fruit. That's a possibility. But, but no. Yes. Uh, there you go! 
I like that one. She bought it out because the ground was cursed. Genius. Remember, he was a till the ground. It was a curse for him to till the ground. Mm. But then he going to bring that cursed thing and present it to the Most High King, mm. the Almighty of all creation. He knew it was a curse. He knew how hard he had to work. It was a pain. It was a suffering because of evil actions. But then he's going to take that and bring it up to the Most High, who is the glory of all creation. Sure, that brings it back to intent, though. You know, mm -hmm. that even intent was right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That'd be part of that same trend of thought. And then, like, like he's trying to bring in, still in my, my lesson. Oh, I, don't know what you're I might as well sit down. He do this every week. He's still my lesson. You see that? That shows you that great minds think alike. Because mm -hmm. he'd be right there. <laughs> He be right there. Last week I was teaching the lesson. He said, "Bro, go on, back right." And he was 100 percent correct. Have a seat. Have a seat. Because he can see, he got that vision. He has an understanding, and it's respectable. Watch what happens. There's a reason why I'm walking with you in this direction, sharing with you this little portion of light. This ain't nothing but a little bit compared to what the Most High has to in store for you. Just continue on the path. Mm -hmm. Read that part again, and then move on to the next verse and watch what happens. You talking about verse four? Uh -huh. and, and Abel he also, wait, and Abel he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Most High had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but uh -huh. unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Abel Cain, brought life. Mm -hmm. Cain brought curse. Mm, read on, please. Uh, and Cain was very wroth. Cain got wroth. What? What did Cain do? Cain was very wrong. He got angry. His intent. He got angry. How in the world are you going to get angry with the most high? Mm. What kind of mind do you have to have <coughs> to get angry with the creator? Yeah. See, sometimes we read these books, but we don't really, really thoroughly let the most high dissect them for us. Watch what happens next. Read on. And his countenance fell. His countenance, his appearance. It dropped. Mm -hmm. Read on. And the Most High said unto Cain. What did the Most High say? He Why? said it to every one of us today. Every one of us is being taught this one lesson. Read on, please. Why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? What's that? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you doest well, you will be accepted, right? All right. And if you don't do well, what happens? You want me to read this? Sin. Sin. Light at the door. Light at the door. Now this lesson, this portion of the lesson was so deep. I actually went into it and I parsed the whole thing, man. I grabbed it all down and broke it all down. And I really don't want to go through all of that to give you uh, the whole breakdown in this one lesson. Because it's a whole lot. I mean, I've got like six pages here. Ooh. From that one, that one verse. Read that verse again. Seven. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Now I want to share with you the many different translations and how the people. Remember, I talked to you earlier about how people translate things to try to get their intent in across to you, mm -hmm. so that you walk away with their understanding. Right. So I want to read all that to you. Not all of them, because it's like fifteen of them. So I'm going to read a few of them, okay? Now, these are from different versions of the Bible. Come over, Bob. <laughs> These are from different interpretations of the Bible. Okay? Different translators translated these portions. We're reading Genesis, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. Mm -hmm. This version I like the best. This is from BBE. I don't know who BBE is. Do you know who BBE is? I don't know who BBE is. But BBE was so close to the original Hebrew that I want to read that first. Okay? okay. BBE says, if you do well, will you not have honor? That's a powerful translation to me. 
because you will be honored by the creator when you do well in life. But you got to make the right what? Choice. To do well. Mm -hmm. The creator says, I put before you life and death, good and evil, but choose you so that you and your, your children under you can dwell and live in peace and happiness. I got that in here too, and I'm going to break that down for you in a minute. But it's something about the choices that we make in life that determines us receiving that honor or that curse. You understand what I'm trying to get to? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of us today that walk through lives trapped in situations. And a lot of times the situations that we are trapped in is a result of the choices we made. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be honorable about it and accept that as a punishment. Don't mean that you have to live in it forever because you know what you can do to change your, change your ways? Change your behavior. It's simple. But a lot of times we be so stuck <coughs> or stupid that we can't get past where we're at. And when we get stuck in that environment, we begin to get depressed because we really don't want to be there. It's really not a comfortable place to be. And we're not wise enough for the most part, many of us, we're not wise enough to realize that all we need to do is change our behavior. Go back, redo, re-undo, as, as Nasi mentioned earlier, uh, it, that, that people leave out in the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, 23rd verse. They leave out that part where it says, you've got to go back and make things right that you messed up at. No, we don't want to do that. With too much pride in us. To go back and say, well, yo, my brother, I'm, I apologize. You was right. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I disrespected you. I was very arrogant in my behavior. Please forgive me. Or brother, you right. I stole that money from you. Or sister, you right. I was gossiping. And I talked about you. And I asked that you forgive me. And change your behavior. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Then you will receive honor. And what that say right there, that says, if you do well, all of us has the opportunity to do what? Well. We all do. But what happens is, when I'm told not to be on the computer, doing certain things on the computer, but I want to get up in the bed, I want to get up in the middle of the night, when I don't think nobody up, and be on the sofa on the computer, because I think my mama and my father sleep, and I get caught, I get busted, there is no honor in that. Now I'm bringing it down on this level. But each one of us can apply it to our own lives. Our lives, the, the situations that we're in, are a direct result of the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't see all the way down the street what's before you. So it's best that you walk in your integrity and always choose to do right. Do righteously, always, no matter what. If your spirit says there's some deceit in it, stay away from it. If your spirit says to you there's a large possibility people are going to get hurt and it's not for the benefit of the nation, then stay away from it. You understand? Mm -hmm. We have a choice, family. But let me get back to BBE. BBE says, if you do well, will you not have honor? And if you do wrong, evil, wrong. If you do wrong, bad, sin is waiting at the door. What's that door? What's the door? Nobody know who the door is? The mind. Tell me your mind. Okay. The mind. Oh, let me tell you something, boy. Sin is contagious. Evil is contagious. Wickedness is contagious. And it has a way that once you make the what? The choice to do it, you're actually doing something greater than what you even understand. You're opening up your essence to a negative, evil entity that actually steps inside of you and finds ways to consume you in other areas of life that you never even imagined. And you become a wicked individual. So how do you fight against a spirit? How? Does any of you know the weapon that you use to fight against a spirit? If a spirit is consuming you, know he's messing you up in your mind. He's messing this is where he makes you think you're right. You're the best man in the crowd. Everybody got to humble themselves to you. 
That brother, that sister ain't no good over there. That brother's a cheat. He's a snake. He's a snake. He's telling you that you're better or that person is no good in your mind. Mm -hmm. How do you combat that? Your heart, your the best your intent. Right. You don't do what your mind That's does right. Anything. That's right. That's the best weapon. You know, a lot of people don't do that, though. They give in to that negativity and that evil. Now, let's go deep with this for a minute. Because a lot of us need to be prepared for the war that's at hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, we not. Because your teachers didn't teach you these type of lessons. Who know the Ten Commandments? Verbatim by heart. They taught you that, didn't they? Now, who know how to stop doing wickedness? They don't teach you that. We got one or two people raise their hand. That's good. But those are not the lessons that we are taught. That all these things are a choice. It's a conscious decision that you make. You already know in your mind the road that you should not take. But what you do is usually you take the walk the road that's going to bring you the most pleasure, the most comfort, that's going to fit your lifestyle and what it is that you want to do. But you know it's not right. You know it's evil. So once you open that doorway or that portal and you let that negative entity in, you have no control over that negative entity. <clears throat> Think about it for a minute. If that negative energy has been in the earth since the beginning of time, it can almost predict your behavior. Am I right? And now you have it inside of you. How do you get it out? By deliberately doing what's right. By deliberately doing what's right. Your, your, your what? What's that word we talked about? The fear for the creator? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your intent got to be right. If your intent is not right, then you're going to be an evil person. Now, we, we covered some words this morning. I'm going to cut this real short and we're going to get out of here. We covered some words this morning. I talked about sin. I talked about iniquity. iniquity and I talked about Trans transgression. Mm -hmm. Iniquity deals with your intent. Transgression is the action of actually doing what your intent told you to do. Mm -hmm. And sin is a result of what you have done. And all of it goes together and plays together to show a violation against the commands of the great king, the creator of all creation. Does anybody not understand what I just said? Can you repeat That's that? Oh, I was taking notes and I missed it. Iniquity. Iniquity I, I is your intent <laughs> behind the action. Transgression is the action within itself. It's like the process of you playing it out. Mm -hmm. And sin is a result of what you have done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just for clarification, I want to ask. Um, so are you saying that sin is the are you saying that sin is the consequence? Well, the consequence would be the punishment. It would be the result of what you've done. At, okay, if I if I picked up this glass of water, picked it up off the table, my intent, my intent was, man, I'm thirsty. Let me think about how I can get my body some nutrients. Right? So my right? transgression was the act of actually getting it. Right. And then I drank it was the sin. <laughs> That's what it's all. Is that what it was? It's not, but maybe I get it. Keep going. But you know what transgression is going to be? Transgression is any violation, any act of violence at all. That's the de actual definition of the word. Right, I'm just trying to get his interpretation. My interpretation, well, so that you'll get it, is this. When you first think about an evil thing, mm -hmm. that's the iniquity. Mm -hmm. You have to go before the Most High and ask for forgiveness of your sins, iniquities, and your transgressions, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, who knows what they are? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Well, most people don't. Your iniquities are your evil thoughts, the wickedness that resides within... We got people who do some wicked things. Mm -hmm. Now, before the result of that wicked thing that they did, but before they did the wicked thing, which is a sin, they had to go and move toward the sin. That's the transgressions. And the transgressions come after they first thought about what they were doing. Remember earlier we talked about your intent? Mm -hmm. Your intent makes the difference in every... When that man tricked that old lady... His mind told him to do that. His, his thought, I'm a tripper. That was iniquity. The transgression was, 
And the result was he called that lady to fall. And now he has two legs. She bleeding. She bleeding. Her leg broke. Yes, but then, you know what? Uh, <laughs> you might accept that as that because they're all sinful. Because you can be judged for what's in your heart, you know, your heart, your love, your mind. You can be judged for that as well for being a wicked individual. I'm, I'm, I'm keep going. I ain't got like too much more to give. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna have to talk later. So that was, about it. Now. that was it. Oh, I, can, I ain't got but five minutes. What you talking about? Let me show you. There's a time. <laughs> I got fifteen hours of lesson here prepared to give to y'all. Fifteen. Look at this. Fifteen hours. Ooh, and then, and then, and then, and then, look, look. Let me show you. I ain't lunch finished. Lunch then I got all this stuff. Prepared to give y'all. Look, look, look at all that. All that was meant to be brought out today. Oh, all of that. But I ain't got no time. Start 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 so if there's people who want to go on with the lesson. Call me. Come to my house. We can meet. And, and if things want to go on, we can go down, break the books out, pull out the notes. And if we got time, we can sit here because we just gonna be sitting around eating. Right. So we can do that. But I can't hold up the process of everybody. For select few, I would love to, but exactly. I don't know what's right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> right. right. Good that's breakdown. Shabbat so ain't over till six. <laughs> if y'all want to go and get deep into this, we can get deep. Because I got the notes, I got the books, I got them ready. I did like 18 hours of study for this thing. For real. I'm ready. So you just got the condensed version. My only ideal, my only thought, was to get you to understand that you have a choice in life. To choose good or to choose evil. Mm-hmm. Do what the Most High say. Take his hint. Let me grab that for you. Do what the Most High say. And what the Most High wants you to do is to choose good so that you will live. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 15, chapter 30, verse 15. Yes. Okay. So you know he said, send, send creepers at your door, and then you said, the door is the mind. Yes. And then you say, like, it's constantly there trying to defeat you. So say the man. Um, he thought about tripping the old lady. Yes. He put his foot out, and right when she was about to walk, he put it back. So yeah. he defeated. Let me show you what that is. Let me show you what that is. Let me show you what that is. She said the man wanted. He thought about tripping the woman, the iniquity. He actually did the transgression by putting his foot out. But then when the lady went to go by, he snatched his foot back. When we read Genesis forty, Genesis four and seven, mm -hmm. grab that for me. Okay. And I want you to read it, because it's going to make sense to you. you got to do it around me, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Read Genesis 4 and 7. Read it again. Okay. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Hallelujah. 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 If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Now, here he comes. He the lady great fall. He great pull his foot back. And what it said? <laughs> and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You shall what? Rule over him. You shall rule over him. That entity, that negative energy is going to be within you. <coughs> it's going to cause you to make decisions that are unrighteous and unrighteous behavior. But in the end, the word that they use there is Rab, R-A-B. And Rab means Rabbah or Rabbah, something like that. It means to rule over or to master it. So this is showing you that everybody has these entities within them. But you have the desire to master over that entity. Mm -hmm. The spirit world is real. <laughs> it's serious. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are tempted when we are alone. Mm -hmm. When we are around a righteous individual, the people we perceive to be righteous, we are all upright. But when we get alone, or when we get in the midst of people who don't know us, then that test comes, and you get to see how righteous you really are. And if you don't rule over that spirit, you're going to end up walking through that door and letting him in and becoming evil. Does anybody not understand? We all on the same page. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. I have set before thee this day life is good, death is evil. Life and good, death and evil. Read mm -hmm. on. And that I command thee this day to love the Most High thy Elohim. That I command you. Now, what is the command that the Most High is giving? Love. To love him. Read mm -hmm. on. To walk in his ways. To do what? 
Walk That's your way. intent. Walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. Read on. And to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. That action is to actually keep them. Read on. That thou mayest live and multiply. That thou mayest what? Live and, and multiply. Not only live, but live and multiply. Mm -hmm. Read on. And the Most High, that Elohim, shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And he will bless you in the land when you go to possess the land. That's wherever you are. But we're talking about going back home, though, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the first beginning of this chapter is going to talk about. But read on. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear. Now, if thou heart, what is thy heart? Mind. mind. The mind. If your mind turn away, so that you won't hear. Now, think about this for a minute. That spirit creeps in you. It gives you a thought, right? Mm -hmm. That thought makes you want to intentionally do something wicked and something evil. But if you hear the Most High, return back to the ways he said, return. If you return back to the Most High, you won't continue that transgression, would you? Mm -hmm. Read on, please. But shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. That's intention. We, we did that intentionally. It wasn't, we didn't slip and fall, and then all of a sudden we worship in deities. Mm -hmm. That was intended. We had that iniquity in our spirit. It crossed our minds first. But well, wait, how come they got all that going over there, and I'm over here with nothing? Let me go, the intention now. Let me go, the transgression. Let me go and see what they're doing over there. And then when you actually get there, you're looking around, and you start to worship it. Now you're sitting. Mm. You've covered iniquity. You've covered transgression, and you've covered sin. And the Most High is warning us right here not to partake in those things. The iniquity, you might have that. Everybody thinks things that they shouldn't be thinking from time to time. But it's what you do with that thought that makes it all relevant. That transgression is the process of doing that thought, putting that thought into action, making it a verb. Okay? Read on that little portion. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to, rec to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. He set before us what? Life, life and, and death. death. And gave us a what? Choice. choice. He gave us a choice. In mm -hmm. I set before you life and death, mm -hmm. good and evil. Mm -hmm. It's right here. And it's all around us frequently throughout the earth, but it's right here. You got a choice in the matter. You have to allow yourself to rob what? To rob, to do what? To rule over, to master it. And a lot of people don't take the time to pray. Don't take the time to meditate. Don't take the time to just think about what's making that energy thrive within them that's causing them to think the way that they're thinking. A lot of people don't take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. This girl was in a relationship. She got out of a relationship and two weeks later, she in another relationship. Why did the first relationship end? You didn't take the time to sit back and study yourself, your behavior, your character, your mind, your spirit. You didn't do that. But you must learn to master self. And, that, and by mastering self, you're actually mastering that demon that exists in all mankind. Sin lieth at the door. He lurketh. He crouches. That means if he's crouching, he's down here like this right here, waiting for opportunity to jump. Mm -hmm. This is real, y'all. We read it as a fable in the book and question it, but it's intent. It's real. He's trying to bring you down. He's trying to hold up the process. He's trying to stop the righteousness from spreading within the earth. But you think you got control over it. That joker is sharp. You know why he's so sharp? Because he was here since the beginning of the time. This ain't nothing new. He ain't a new kid on the block. He ain't a new person you just met. And you can, oh man, he ain't threatening nothing. Oh, he will bring your whole world down by letting him in on a small situation. Read that a little bit and let's get out of here. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That, th that thou mayest love the most high thy power, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the most high swore unto Abraham thy father. To, oh, Shlika, swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham. 
to Yitzchak and to Yaakov to give them. Now, what do you say after it said choose life? Mm. Watch this part because let me, let me give you a history story real quick and let you know where we're at right now. Why I'm choosing that part to bring it out. Mm -hmm. Why did we get kicked out of the land of Israel? From practicing what? Idolatry. Okay, read that part of that command that the Most High said for us to do. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Most High thy power. What's the command that he's saying for us to do? And do what? Love, 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 love the Most High. What else? That thou mayest obey His voice. That thou may what? Obey His voice. Uh -huh. What else? That thou mayest cleave unto Him. That thou may what? Cleave unto Him. And what else? For He is thy life and the length of thy days. For He is thy life and the length of our days. A lot of people sitting back and don't understand what this is talking about. Mm -hmm. This is saying I ain't got room for nobody else. You don't bring no partners along when you worship the creator of all creation. He's just that great. It's, life. it's just like that. He's a jealous power. And he doesn't want to share his glory with, with anyone. Him. But a lot of our people are walking around singing their Hebrew Israelites that they worship the creator of all creation. But they got a buddy that they tie next to him. Right. And say that this buddy is responsible this for buddy. certain things. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Nice. Mm -hmm. But see, that's a spirit inside of them that they have not learned how to master yet. Mm -hmm. They allow, they feed that spirit energy. They give them energy, and that spirit consumes them to where they are convinced that that is the proper path to take. Mm -hmm. The Most High spells it out all throughout the Zadok. He says, I did this by myself. I create light and darkness. Right. I create good and evil. I, the Most High, did this alone. He says later on in that verse, Isaiah the chapter is 42. He says, there is none beside me. None sits next to the Father. None. So why are you trying to put an idol next to the king of all creation? And say that he is worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us who have elevated past that, we can see how they error. But there are so many errors in our own ways that we cannot see. That when somebody who's elevated a little bit higher than you try to pull your coat to it, you want to talk about them. You want to separate yourself from them because you don't want to come face to face with your own demons. And we all got them. Some of us, it comes in a different form than others. Some of us really don't like this person or that person, but might not say it to them face. Mm. But we'll go back behind their back and talk about them like a dog. Mm. You know what I mean? Spreading that negative energy. Causing that demon that we got on us, rather than being master over that demon, we allow that demon to conquer and we want to spread that demon on somebody else. Because you know spirits are contagious. Yeah. Yes. And that's what we do. This is why the Most High says for you not to gossip. Don't spread rumors. It's not good. I, I suggest you go straight to the source if that's your issue. Mm -hmm. Some of us got an alcoholic demon that's beating on us back. And we exactly. can't seem to make it through. Right. That demon is strong. Right. And we be at war fighting. Oh, I ain't going to take this drink. Oh, man, that drink look good. I ain't going to take this drink. Oh, man, I don't want that. No, I, no. Don't nobody see me. The Most High sees you. The most high knows. A lot of people got a, uh, uh, that kind of spirit where they're afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. They can't be alone. They got to have some kind of physical connection with the opposite sex. But it ain't your time and it ain't, you ain't married. Right. So learn to master that demon. Mm -hmm. A lot of people got a stealing demon. Mm -hmm. They're going to steal. Oh, I got, I, that's my mama house, but um, she my mama. I could take $10 off the dresser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Walk out. Mm -hmm. And even if it ain't your mama house, it's somebody else's house that you go in on. We at Nazi Rise place today. He got enough money. I'm going to take this book because I like that book. <laughs> <laughs> and you out. But you know what? You think it's nothing. Uh -huh. You know why you think it's nothing? Because you're so accustomed to doing it. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody approach you about your evil because they caught you, they ain't know Nazi Rob had a camera in the light bulb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he watched them. So he calls him up, hey, yo, brother, how's that book working out for you? What book? The 
book, you know, the one you took off my table before you left last night. Oh yeah, that book. I was I was meaning to give it back to you, right? But it was so good, I was, you know, yo, bro, you stole. But the problem is, he don't see it. He justifies. Anytime you justify the evil that you do, you open the door and the portal for more demons to come in. Mm -hmm. The most high sense for you to do is to go back, rewrite your wrong, change from your wicked behavior, and become a new man and live. Is that right? Thank you all. May the most high be pleased. Hallelujah. I think that was a good lesson. What do you think the important part of the lesson was? What was the main takeaway? Choice. 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 And what's the choices that you have? Choose life. <laughs> you know, that's a... Yes, that's what you said all the time. Your mama says that all the time, too. It says, you notice it said choose life, right? But then it said, choose, it says, choose, I get set before you this day, life and death, good and evil. So you had the choice, but he told you what you choose. He said, therefore, choose life. Multiple choice with the answer. Right. So that means that choosing life was a commandment. Y'all don't hear me. So that means somebody going to be mad, but y'all going to have to still love me. If you pick up a box, and on the box it says, if you smoke this, it will kill you, and you take it out the box and you smoke it, are you violating the law? Because it said choose life. Don't get quiet. Don't get quiet. Don't I think get you quiet. probably need to say that again. Don't get quiet. I think they Do missed that. Do not get quiet. Do not get quiet. <laughs> if there's something, that. I'm going to ask it again because somebody, somebody, I got a couple dirty looks. So I mean, I got to yeah. repeat it. Uh -huh. And you pick up a box, <laughs> and the box right on the side of the box, it says if you smoke this, it will kill you. And you take it, and you open it, and you light it, and you smoke it. Are you sinning? Yeah. If the yeah. law said choose life. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of people here could be judgmental of that because, well, they don't smoke. How many other things we do that we know are not in our best interest health wise? If the commandment is to choose life, the commandment is to choose life. Yeah, he's right. Sugar is. He, that's one if of them. The commandment is to choose life. We gotta bethink ourselves sometimes, right? We gotta bethink ourselves sometimes. See if the choices we're making are really choosing life. Because if it's not choosing life, then what are we choosing? Yeah. And everybody wiser than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And who's going to say the closing prayer? You want to say something? Bring my song. All right. So I'll tell you Annie. what we're going to do. Annie. We're going to do the, uh, we're going to do, you want to say closing prayer? We're going to do the uh, closing prayer. We're going to have one more song. We're going to have Ruth sing Psalm 150. And then we're going to have Prince say the closing prayer. All right, so you want to sing, sing. I think all got one mom. Anybody who said three songs. Don't worry, we can sing on a lunch break. Oh, so we got so we got two. Oh, he don't know we sing one song. Alright, so we're gonna sing one song, my help. Ruth sing one fifty, Prince with the comes in three. Wow. <laughs> she just said there. Who sang my whole? She said, wait. He has to leave. Huh? You said, oh, remember? You first met it. Oh, why does I go? That's not crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to two. We're going to two. And the song on 50. And then closing prayer. I'm going to continue the lunch. If you want to I don't know what y'all gonna do. We just need to get it in.
no, they, they will never say no to the praise they of God. Did. They who do you think they are? No. They, they will never say no. Who you pointing to? They will never say no. They can't play the drums to it, that's why. It's, it's all right, because we're going to do that, but she's going to put us a nice for prayer vibes. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we're going to do Psalm 150 to finish the prayer vibes. Then we're going to have Prince sing the closing prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who got started? Who saw it? Who's that, Nadia? Y'all think I remember the words, I don't? I will. She knows. I will lift up my eyes from the hill, from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord with me, heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. Yah, which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord Sing. is thy shade. Upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, no moon by night. Even forevermore. My help, my help, my help, Great and mighty master, we come unto you at this time, O great king, asking for permission to approach unto your throne. Thou art our power, 
our shield, our buckler, our confidant, the one in whom we are to trust, to praise, to honor, and to worship. We come before you, Father, asking for your divine mercy to be placed upon us, for we have sinned, and we have committed all types of abominations and wickedness as a people. We ask that thou will cover us with thy power, thy mercy, thy might, that thou will raise us up in our minds of righteousness, that we may elevate to a higher level to teach the earth of your truth, that we may be forgiven of our iniquities and our transgressions. O oh, most high great king, we summon your power on this day. We command of thee that thou would bless us and strengthen us and guide us in the proper way of life, that we may teach your truth throughout all the earth. Help and heal us. Forgive us and do not forsake us. Bless us and strengthen us and help us to overcome the adversarial forces that seek to devour our lives. Blessed be thy name, O Most High Great King, throughout all eternity, forever and forever. Excuse me. 